dollars purchasing power dwindles to another record low fed is getting its wishes so the latest data shows that durable goods inflation is at 3.3 percent food inflation is at 3.4 percent and the consumer price index rose 1.7 percent in february from a year earlier the fastest year over year increase in 12 months Right. And the government is claiming that in 2020, the inflation rate was approximately 1.6%. And they are estimating that for 2021, the official rate of inflation will be about two and a quarter percent. Now, if we were to look at the way inflation was calculated just 20 years ago, without a lot of the what are called hedonic adjustments, what we find is that the actual rate of inflation is over 9%. So that chart from WallStreet.com is showing clearly that your purchasing power for the money in your pocket is losing at least 10% per year in purchasing power. That means you've, if your wages are not increasing by 10% a year, that means your standard of living is dropping. And what we have in the United States certainly is a struggle to bring in, quote unquote, minimum wage to cr create um, livable wages. Uh, clearly, those wages are not are not expanding. So that quality of life in America, in aggregate, because of the money printing, which reduces purchasing power, is causing the standard of living in America to go down. That is irrefutable. And anyone who debates that is not looking at these very succinct and clear numbers. Here is the chart: purchasing power of consumer dollar index value not seasonally adjusted. So you see it from 2007, declining, 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 as of course, since um, you see the big dip at first when the financial crisis, the great financial crisis started and uh, money printing started to kick in. Uh, they slowed it down for a moment, uh, but as you see, the, the, the decline in your purchasing power continues the, the value of your labor continues to drop essentially what you can buy with your labor <clears throat> drops yeah right what you can buy for your labor drops right so that 15 percent income increase uh, that you just mentioned is distributed in in unequally let's call it so that you've got this m multiplying effect on the asset side of the ledger mm. so for housing for example it's going up by considerably more. The, probably the best mind uh, who's looked at this is Michael Saylor at MicroStrategy, who points out qu quite clearly that if you look at an inclusive uh, aggregate of everything in the economy that the average person is going to encounter, including healthcare, housing, education, food, energy, right down the list, um, the actual loss of purchasing power or inflation per year right now is between 15 and 20 percent, which would map the the amount of money supply per year now that's being pumped up into the system. So no labor uh, is going to keep up with that. And uh, only people who are speculating in the asset market have any attempt to keep up with that. And that's why we see so much money going into Bitcoin, because it's a direct escape valve away from all this insane money printing. But uh, the actual experience of day to day prices now it's no longer easy to hide the fact that food and energy and housing are starting to meaningfully impact everybody in America who's not, who's not of, let's say, the 100 million and above class where they've got a hedge in, in terms of assets. So that would include 99.8% of the population. Comparing Bitcoin to gold over the last 12 months, Gold is now at 0%. It's fallen back to where it was at the beginning of the pandemic, beginning of $4 trillion printed by the government last year, $1.9 trillion printed today. So that's $6 trillion has been printed in those 12 months. $6 trillion. The, the um, market cap of gold is only $8 to $9 trillion. So it's printed all of that and nothing. it hasn't moved. Bitcoin is up 574%. Uh, probably about in line with uh, money supply growth. Right. Well, it proves, again, that the price of gold does not enjoy free price discovery, uh, whereas Bitcoin does. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now let's continue. So Bitcoin is proving what many have said for years, 
going all the way back to the Gold Antitrust Action Committee when we first started talking about them 18 years ago, the price of gold is manipulated. It doesn't have true price discovery. And Bitcoin does, and Bitcoin is showing you what the money printing is doing. Now, when you have assets on your books and all the money printing is allowing those assets to go up in price, is that good? I mean, you can't take your house down to the grocery store and eat it, right? It's good because you can borrow against it. Yes. And if interest rates are near zero, then you've got the ability to print your own money. I remember living in the UK during the housing boom, people had their house tied to their bank account. And every month, the value of the house was said to go up another 2%, and the bank would let you borrow another 2% right out of your bank account and mm -hmm. charge you a low, fairly low rate of interest. And so interest rates have created a divide and, a, and really the grounds for a new civil war, I think, because those who are allowed to get those 0% interest rates are, are get them through political favoritism, not through merit. Those who are being subjected to high interest rates and, and being cut out of the asset market it, that is also a political ploy by those in power to get more for themselves and to destroy the fabric of the economy. And that's heading into serious trouble. What's been your experience trying to cross border with some gold compared to Bitcoin? Well, uh, I don't try to do it because I've heard too many horror stories of crossing borders with gold, even uh, small amounts. So I personally don't do it. Um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you know, how do you know somebody has Bitcoin? They just can memorize 12 words and if you can memorize 12 words, you can store billions of dollars worth of value. So uh, there's no comparison there. Yeah, um, it, the fact is that Bitcoin is kind of taking market away from gold. It's taking market away from fiat money. It also takes market away from the so-called altcoins. And uh, I guess the second biggest coin or one of the biggest altcoins out there would be Ethereum. And you've written a piece for Casey Research Quote, a Rube Goldberg of buzzwords. Seven reasons to sell all your Ethereum today and buy Bitcoin, right? We don't usually talk about altcoins, but this piece was pretty compelling. Tell us about it. Yes, well, uh, a lot of people who are new to the space, they lump or, or don't know about the space. They lump Bitcoin in with Ethereum and these altcoins. But the reality is, is they're not even in the same universe. It's completely inappropriate uh, to lump them in. So um, I don't think anybody is looking at Ethereum as a store of value, anybody serious is looking at Ethereum as a store of value. Um, so what I did in this piece is I just took a deep dive on it and looked at what is it, what, what really is it, and what attributes does it have, and compared them to Bitcoin. Um, in short, Ethereum is not immutable, it can be censored. It has a monetary, a flexible, arbitrary monetary policy that is hard to audit and is controlled by developers who prefer inflation. Um, it has, uh, net, its network is centralized. Its network infrastructure is centralized uh, into this company called Inf Infura. So it's, it's, it's not decentralized in the same way as Bitcoin is. It has an unclear use case. Bitcoin has a crystal clear use case. It's a hard money monetary system that is accessible to anybody and controlled by nobody. But what, what real world, pro it works, Bitcoin works in the real world and it solves probably mankind's biggest problem, which is storing and exchanging value. That's what Bitcoin solves. What does Ethereum solve? Uh, as far as I can tell, I haven't seen it anything built on Ethereum uh, that has added any kind of economic value or solved any kind of uh, real world problem. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with first-hand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club 
no financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.